Yes, 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 yes. God, come on. Y'all give God some praise. See, one of the reasons why it can be tough for us sometimes to praise God is because we don't understand the English language. See, when you see God is, that means that right now, whoever God says he is, when we need God, God is all that we need while we're in the trouble, while we're in trials, God is. See, but we still don't get it. Is is the present tense. Was is the past tense. So God was good back there, which means he is going to be good here. Oh, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. When you were going through, he was good. Now he is is good but here's the best part about it because he was good and because he is good we can scream and shout because we know he's going to be good come on give God some praise y'all give God some praise God is he is my all in all hallelujah to the Lamb of God now this morning We are going to not be before you long because this is a message I don't need no help with. Y'all can stay in them seats and just hold that chair down if you want to, but I'm going to shout because God is. Let's pray. Most gracious God, our Father, Lord, you are awesome, awesome, awesome beyond the belief. And God, it's because of who you were that I can be lifted up because of who you are. And I can continue to press on because of who you're going to be. So God, we just come this morning thanking you for another opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk and impart your words to your people. Father, we pray now for this offering that we're about to take. Father, that we can participate in the worship by participating in the worship of giving. For Father, giving is worship. So God, I pray now that you would free hearts and free minds and free wallets. Lord, that they would give just as they remember you've given to them. God, we're going to thank you in advance for what your word's about to do. For Lord, we know that your word, if it sinks into our hearts, Lord, that it will convict. We know, Lord, if people don't know you as Savior, your word will convert and convince. So God, we thank you. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, the uh, ushers, or excuse me, the deacons, you guys can go ahead and come on and we're going to do the service, uh, the offering on the beginning of the service. Now, there's two good things about that. So if I mess up and preach bad, it won't mess up y'all's offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, you know, Pastor August, he gives you greetings from Kenya. They're in Kenya today. They're, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening. He's already preached once and done a conference on this day, so pastor is still working even where he is. And one thing that we do know, Pastor Holman mentioned it last service, when the pastor's not here, our offering suffers. So y'all, let's not let the offering suffer. Hallelujah. Ah, y'all saying hallelujah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We got some announcements. How about we go over the announcements before the service this time. And the first thing we're going to talk about here is a shirt that they handed me, and I thought they were giving it to me, but it's obvious that that isn't mine. Amen? This is for the basketball camp. W.J. McClure is doing the basketball camp that starts on the 10th of June. It is for the ages, I believe, five, fifth grade and up. Fifth grade and up. It's for those kids. It's $65 per week. So for anybody who has kids sitting at the house doing absolutely nothing, bring them on out across the street and allow them to come and take part in our basketball camp. Also, we have uh, our summer camp, summer program with BCA. It also begins on June 10th. And on June 10th, this is 125 per week. Bring your kids out. Don't let the kids sit in the house. First of all, they suck up all your air. I don't know if y'all had a daddy like that, but he said we were sucking up all the air. That's the first thing. And then secondly, I know they do this. They eat up all your food. And if y'all have a kid that was like me when I was a kid, y'all know how I knew I was full when I was a kid? I saw the light bulb in the refrigerator. That's how I knew I was full. You got to get to the back of it to be full. Get him out of the house. And this is good and wholesome uh, 
Education, entertainment, sports, all of it is done in the name of Jesus. So if you would, go ahead and uh, bring your kids on out. Also, I want to, on behalf of our pastor, welcome any of our first-time guests or visitors. First-time guests or visitors, we're not going to ask you to stand or say anything if there are any here. Please just go ahead and raise your hand, and we're going to just love you, hallelujah. Give them a hand, Bethel's family. Give them a hand like they're welcome. Amen. If you look on your bulletin right here, there is a portion in the bulletin that is detachable. Fill it out and put it in the offering basket or give it to one of the deacons on your way out or one of the ushers. They'll get it too. And, you know, I would say because pastor's in Africa that he may not call you tonight, but y'all, if anybody knows our pastor, there's, if, if there's a will, there's a way. If there's a will, there's a way. So we're praying that someone would contact you tonight if you are a first-time visitor. Thank you so very much. We do not take your visiting for granted. We thank you for coming out and sharing with us and any other visitors that there may be. And I think that the deacons are done and ready. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because we got to participate in worship. Now, family, for those of you that don't know me, I am Pastor James A. Lee. I am the pastoral care pastor, also the executive director over Bethel's Heavenly Hands. And I say James A. Lee because my daddy is James E. Lee and he's got bad credit. So I want to make sure that everybody knows that there's a difference between us. Amen? <clears throat> but I guarantee you this, that there is a word from the Lord. So family, if you would, where you are, please stand and let's read our scripture. That is, if I do still have my bulletin. Here we go. Amen. 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 So we're going to start with Romans 15 and 13. We're going to do this together, all right? So let's go. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe, so that you may overflow with the hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 39 and 7. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Ephesians 2.12. At the time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. Here goes one. This is where we shout, y'all. Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Family, you may be seated. You may be seated. Our message today is what is our hope is in God. My hope, make it personal, my hope is in God. But for some of us, we don't quite know what hope is. We think hope is a wish. You remember when you were a little kid and you and, and Christmas would be December 23rd and you'd be wishing and hoping that you got the new whatever. But see, that's anticipation because you have a uh, perceived or you have a conceived idea of what you may be getting because you ask for a certain thing and you may get that, see? So the anticipation that builds up in you, that comes from your heart and from your head. But hope is a confident expectation in a foreseeable or positive future based on who God is and what he said that he'll do. See, uh, anticipation is a heart emotion. Hope is a soul emotion. Hope comes from way down inside. See, because when you hope for something, you don't necessarily know what it is. You just know that you have hope. So hope is a confident expectation of the future. It's more than a vague wish that something will happen. It's also total confidence in God's goodness. It's also a deep desire or a thirst. See, that's hope. Hope is the thing that tells us that even though we're going through, it's going to be all right. Hope is the thing that tells us that even though everything's against us, it's going to be all right. Let's take a look at our text. We're going to work from the bottom up. And we're going to look at this confident expectation of the future that when it's rooted in God, hope provides motivation to live the Christian life no matter what comes your way. See, look at this. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purposes. See, when you look at that text, you see, and we know. See, it's a confident expectation that we know that something good is going to happen. 
See, I see y'all sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. See, because we go through hell on this side, y'all. But we know that it's going to work together for good if we know God. See, now all the Baptists and all the church folks and the religious folks says, amen. See, it's an amen until something hard hits you. Like when you lose a child. Can you tell the parents of Malia Davis that we know? Don't know if we can do that. Like when you lose a loved one. We just did three funerals this week, and we got two more coming next week. One was a funeral that was unexpected, of course, on our side, but not by God's side. So can you tell that wife and those children, and we know? When you are working and you go into work one day and you're excited, Brother Tracy, because I love this job, and they hand you a pink slip, and then you got to go home to your wife and say, baby, and we know it's going to be all right. See, that, 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 that is hope. The only way you can get that hope is that you know who he is based on his goodness and what he will do. It says, and we know that all things will work together for good. See, you have to understand the all things, not just the we know. See, all things, good things and bad things, working in conjunction with each other, which will draw you into God. Because when you start going through some stuff, when you lose a child or you lose a loved one or life just seems to hurt you so bad, you have nothing else to lean on and trust on in. But not only the God of God is, but the God of God who was. See, do you realize that when God takes you through each and every struggle and trouble and trial in life, it's to get you to the point where you can have hope for what he's going to do and who he's going to be in the future? See, we can sit here and be churchy and say, and we know, Lord, we know all things work together for good. That's great until life punches you in your soul. That's great until you lose everything. That's great for you to get here and say that, but when you lose everything, you got to trust in the God who was so that you know he's the God who is, therefore you know he's the God who will be, and that's hope. See, when your soul hurts, when your soul cries out, is when you realize that you have hope in something that you can't see. So you can't see what the future is. You don't know why he's taking you here and bringing you there. You don't understand it, and it hurts. You got to have hope in who he was. You got to have faith in who he is. Therefore, you can build another hope in who he's going to be. You got to trust God even when life hurts. This isn't a message for the churchy. This is a message for those who know him, those who love him, those who trust him, those who have been through some stuff, those who know that sometimes, like Tropical Storm Allison, that the storm sits over your life. It don't just move on sometimes. Sometimes it sits there and keeps raining and keeps raining and keeps raining and keeps raining and, keeps raining and you say, Lord, why? And he says, just trust me. Just trust me. Storms don't last always. So you don't know the length of the storm. So you got to trust him in it. If it's a short storm, you praise him on that side. If it's a long storm, you praise him while you're in it. Because we're always in one of three positions in life. You've heard your old preacher say it, right? You're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or going through a storm. Right then and there, there's always going to be a storm. But if you have no hope, it will lead to despair. Look at the suicide rate. You guys remember, most of us in here are African-American. Do you guys remember when there was a time when African Americans did not even think about suicide? It was never heard of in our community, was it? I've got a very good friend whose 25-year-old daughter, who would be 31 today, you know where I'm going. She took her life at 25 because it was too hard, because she had no hope. See, the opposite of hope is despair. If you have no hope, if you're focusing on the things of this world, you will end up hopeless. That's how come when you have not enough money at the end of the month, you walk around, oh, woe is me. You didn't, you didn't have enough money last month. <laughs> and guess what? The way the economy's going, you probably won't have enough money next month. Come on, y'all. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Because if there's anybody in here that, you, yeah, you may do some good budgeting, but you do realize that one extra sick day can mess you up. For and some of us, you miss one day's pay, man, it'll mess you up for six months. 
So we put our hope in stuff that is going to change, stuff that's fleeting, and stuff that's going to go away, when our hope needs to be in the God who owns everything. Our hope needs to be in the God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Our hope needs to be in the God who is in control of the bill collectors. The God who is in control of all of the utility companies. See, y'all act like y'all don't know. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought, how am I going to pay this light bill? And then the next month, your light bill is like 160. Everybody been home. And the same people have been there because we always look for a check in the mail. But sometimes just check to see if the, the, the light bill has changed because you're using the same kilowatt hours, but your bill's a little bit different. See, God gives you hope in all things. You ever been hungry? I ain't talking about hungry because, you know, like, you know, because we are so blessed in America. I ain't talking about the hunger when you open up the, the, the cabinets and look and say, what do I want? Ooh, I'm so hungry. I don't know what I want. I know you, your cabinet is full. You can't make a decision. You say you're hungry. You ought to go to some place where you haven't had any food for the last two, three months. I was just talking to a brother here in America. He, his citizenship was something that he's trying to get right now, and he's going through. And the brother has nothing to eat, and his pride wouldn't allow him. He volunteers in heavenly hands, but he wouldn't come and ask for food. The brother told me that he was drinking water with sugar and salt. He was trying to make his own saline so it was enough for his body to go ahead and process. See, because he put his hope in his pride, he had to go through hell by drinking this homemade solution. See, but if you trust in the God that you say you serve, why not just come? You guys realize what an abundance of stuff God has given us in heavenly hands? He's given us so much. So many of y'all and us, we will sit here, and because of our pride and we don't trust God, what we'll do is we'll try to do things under our own power. We'll try to do things our own way. That's why a lot of us end up in jail. That's why a lot of us end up in payday loans. That's why a lot of us end up with debt. Out of the, who's going to give somebody 172% for $200 when you got more? You can ask everybody in for a dollar and get $200. You got to learn to trust God when you're in it. You got to learn to stay close and stay connected and know that there is a positive future. You have to have a confident expectation that God will pick you through. Don't sit there, woe is me, I don't know what it is because it's, it's terrible on Monday. It may be terrible on Tuesday, it may be terrible on Thursday, but I'm going to keep on keeping on and I'm going to keep on expecting God to bring me through. If you got hope, you expect God to do what he says that he was going to do. He's a God of promises. Man, I should have been on the third text by now. <laughs> He's more than a vague wish that something will happen. It's the assurance in God's future faithfulness and presence. That's the opposite of despair. Let's look at Ephesians 2.12. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. It says here that you were separated. So you got to have hope when it feels like the whole world is against you. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever been there? Go, go through a divorce and your mama said, I told you not to marry him or her. Huh? Anybody ever been there? How you, when you come home one day, you get a note, baby, I'm leaving. Well, who's going to take care of these children? Huh? You, you, you go and you get in your car and you, 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 you can't pay your car, no, you get in it and, it and it won't start. You ever been there, it just feels like the whole world is against you. Then you go to work the same day and your boss is picking on you. And you're like, man, I can't stand this dude, but I got to pay the car, no, now I got to take care of these kids. This man, this woman just left me. What's going to go on? It feels like the whole world is against you. You feel like you're on the outside. Here in Ephesians, he's talking to us as the Gentiles, telling us that, look, there was a time and a point and a place in your life where you were not accepted into God's family. There was a time when only the Israelites had the law of God, so they were accepted in, but now there is no more separation. Now you're no longer by yourself. It says now you're no longer excluded. You ever feel excluded? Anybody here ever been excluded? Anybody here ever felt that way? See y'all looking at me crazy. Yes. See, now I tell you, I got a problem. I'm a middle kid and the only boy. So I got a, a, a thing with me where I always felt excluded. Tracy, I always felt like they didn't want me. My sisters, my daddy loved my big sister, and my, my, my mama loved my little sister. Nobody loves me. Woe is me, huh? But let me just tell you something. But when I, when I found Jesus, 
When I found Jesus, even though I know my mama loved me, and I know that my daddy loved me, but nobody loved me like Jesus loved me. When you feel like you're on the outside, he said, you don't have to be on the outside. Come on in. The Bible says, come in and I will give you rest. You don't have to worry about feeling excluded or on the outside because you know that you know that you know that you know. It's not a wish. It's a confident expectation that God's going to take care of you through it. Because sometimes we are all, are all, all by ourselves. The system doesn't always work out for us. Sometimes you can't get the food stamps. Sometimes you ain't eligible for certain things. But God says, listen, listen, if you just trust me, if you just trust me, remember the widow of Zarephath? I'll help you with that. Elisha came and said, look, I need you to take them last two little pieces of bread. I mean, your meal and your oil and make me a cake. Now, y'all know good and well. Y'all read the Bible and get all holy and say, yeah, look at God. Somebody came in your house. You got two pieces of bread and one of them little packs of peanut butter. You and your child about to die. You're going to eat this and die, is what she said. And then the preacher coming in and say, hey, give me that bread. Give me that peanut butter. Show of hands, who's going to do it? Thank y'all for being honest. Only you church folk in here that raise your hand, you Baptists. Let me, but let me tell you something. And, and here's the thing. That's the reason why most of us feel excluded and left out. Because we do not trust in the God of hope. See, when she trusted in him, not only did, did she get fed, but her son got fed. They didn't even know how the jar kept getting filled. But it kept getting filled. There was enough there for everybody. There was an abundance after she had given God, given it to the man of God for God. She was obedient. Our obedience keeps us from being able to have hope. Our disobedience keeps us from being able to have hope. We don't chase after the things that God has asked us to chase after. Sometimes God says, give up your family. Sometimes God says, give up your friends. Sometimes God says, Says, give up that marriage. Sometimes God says, give it all up. If you just give it up and trust me, I promise you, look on the other side. I'm going to help you make it through. I will help you make it through. I'll share this. I'm going to tell you right now. A lot, a lot of you know. My lovely wife sitting right here. Uh, this is my second wife. My first wife didn't work out because the closer I got to God, the further she got from me. And I'm struggling, y'all. I'm so how, how does this work, Lord? Tell me how this works. But I got closer and then she got further. I got closer and she got further. And then finally our marriage ends up over. I'm not from no divorced folk, y'all. Grandmama was married to granddaddy no matter what he did. Can I get an amen? Mama was married to daddy no matter what he did. I had a Friday night leave daddy, come back on Monday. Hallelujah. Yeah. It, 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 and mama said, hey, it is what it is. Bill's paid, let it happen. I, I'm not from, they didn't do that when I grew up. So I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I can't figure it out. God, what is this? But I know this. The God who brought me through when I was going through so much stuff. Two years later, Lord, y'all, the most wonderful woman just showed up in my life. And I, I wasn't out there looking. I was, not, I was a single dad. So I had some issues, man. Some sisters used to be like, who do your baby hair? You know, because I was a single dad. And y'all know how it is. I'm taking care of four kids. That's a good man. I'm going to get me a good man. Huh? I had to run them off. I know I ain't that good looking. I ain't even trying to pretend like that. But I had some qualities that some women were looking for. And some church women. But it wasn't what I was looking for. Because here's what I did. I started chasing God. And I started running as fast as I could after God. And as I'm chasing God, I'm looking this way. And I got my eyes on the prize. And I looked to my right. And then, who was that? Oh, Lord Jesus, where you going? I'm going to Jesus. You come, I'll be going to Jesus together. And I'm going to tell you right now, 17 years later, guess what? Look who's beside me. Come on, y'all, because you know what? My hope wasn't in what I did or what I couldn't do. My hope was not in all of the stuff that I was able to do. My hope and my confident expectation was that God would send me somebody that would come alongside and do the work with me. Y'all seen as we work in ministry. Let me tell you how good she is. She took me with three kids. And a couple of them pretty bad, y'all. <laughs> a couple of them were pretty bad. A couple of them were pretty bad. But she, was, she came from some whooping folk. And the blessing. And that's how you know when somebody loves your kids, believe it or not, when they will discipline them. When they will discipline them. See, so it was more than a, a, a vague wish, but it was an assurance of God's faithfulness and God's presence. He said, just trust me. I see your marriage failing. Just trust me. I see you with these kids. I had a daughter. She's sitting right there with my grandbaby. I had a daughter. Who, who did do her hair? 
she got a picture on fourth grade. She got a plaque going this way and one going that way. But I'm going to tell y'all what, I was chasing Jesus more than I was chasing fashion. Baby, you might look bad, but daddy ain't going to mess y'all up. And I wasn't going to mess him up because I chased him. And he assured me that it was going to be all right. Three college graduates, one in the military. They're all still crazy, but guess what they all got? They got Jesus. So now they have hope because two of them have children. And I see them going through sometimes with their children. My granddaughter's right there. I can't believe she's still. She must be asleep. Oh, she went to children's church. Hallelujah. Because she's the polite devil. I'm sorry for stealing your candy. You know, she tell you she's sorry that she stole your candy. But it's that assurance. Uh, we have to have a total confidence in God's goodness in the face of despair. Look at this. But Lord, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. See, sometimes we can do some good stuff thinking that God's going to rescue us or thinking that God's going to be with us because a lot of us are churchy. And David here, what was going on in David's life? David said, look, God, I've kept my mouth. I haven't acted a, you know, acted a fool in front of sinners. Uh, stuff is happening and I haven't cried out and, and cursed you. But then I realized that it was you who was causing my affliction. And he says, but now, Lord, where do I look? Because my hope is only in you. When you've tried everything your own way, because we've done it, right? Some of us married two, three times. Some of us have had 13 or 14, 15 different jobs. Some of us have uh, doing all kind of little shady stuff to make ends meet. Some of us have been from church to church to church to church to church till we find the one. Y'all do realize that the only thing that's wrong with the church you just left y'all, is you. <laughs> if, the, if all them churches was bad, we're going to leave that alone. Uh, so we've tried to do this stuff under our own power and under our own control and based on who, who we are and what we can, that's going to lead to despair because you're going to hit the wall every single time because eventually you'll come to the end of your ability and to the end of your power. You're going to come to the end of it. How many of you have been on 15 interviews and, they, and they still don't have a job? Huh? Come on. How many of you, no matter how many times you try, you can't pass that board exam? Come on. How many of you, no matter how many whoopings you gave your child, he still acted a fool? Huh? How many? How many? See, but, but when you keep trying to do things under your own power and your own way, you realize just how flawed you are. But here's the good thing. When you trust God, you realize just how strong he is. Because those same children that you had to keep on whooping, now they're 29, 30 years old, and they say, Daddy, I went to church today, and I think I I'm going to go ahead and join. you got to understand that when we trust and we hope in God and all the stuff that we put in our children, we trust in them and no longer trusting in, in ourselves, you'll see a future and an outcome that you could never imagine. My mother, my mother, now one of her baddest kids, was named Jim Jim. I'm trying to figure out who that is, ain't y'all? Y'all, y'all know my people. Was me. You couldn't stop me from doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it. I got four whoopings in one day, two for the same thing, because I thought I could get away this time. <laughs> Never said that I was the smartest. And uh, all through school, I got suspended six times in eleventh grade. Six times, y'all Baptists quit judging people. Y'all hear him? Oh, yeah, I just said I was bad. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, I, got, I got, almost got kicked out of college, so I just left. Uh, was arrested one time for stealing a money order for $130. Oh, I was smart, wasn't I? All of that, and all my mother did was keep on praying. All my mother did was keep on trusting. All my mother did was keep on believing. 
And then what happens is 15 years later, now I stand here before you today trying to impart God's word because the one thing she did was she got me to Jesus. She made sure that I plant the seed of Jesus Christ in this child and then my hope is in the Lord. My hope is in what Jesus Christ can do, no longer in what I can do. So all the time when you're thinking it ain't going to be enough, and this kid is working, it working my nerves, and I don't know how I'm going to make it through, just get him to Jesus. You get him to Jesus, and I guarantee, and I promise you this, God promises you this, that the foreseeable future will be a good outcome. Well, there will be a good outcome because you have to hope in the God of hope and not hope that you're doing the right thing. Don't wish, but have hope. Lastly, look at this. Romans 5, 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, that you may overflow with hope at the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we tried everything else. Let's give the God of hope a try. When you're full of joy, Every day is sweeter. Every night is more restful. And every room that you had there, if there's no room for pity or despair because you'll be full of hope. Let me tell it to you like this. I've shared my testimony more than one time. But I'm going to tell you. I know who the God of hope is. Because, see, when you see me walking around here with a smile on my face, I'm not happy. I got joy. I got joy deep down in my soul because when I was out there chasing after dope, when I was out there chasing after foolishness, God still covered me. He still kept me. And I know this. Anybody ever been out there, spent all your money on some drugs? Can I get it? And ain't nobody know Baptist going to talk up in here. I've been there. And you wake up on, on a Saturday morning, you got a dollar fifty left. You been there? Have you ever been someplace where you understand and you're laying in your bed at night because you did something shady and you don't know who's going to knock on and knock down your door? Have you ever been there? Have you ever done something, drank something, slept with someone or something? Have you ever done that and realized that you know what, this ain't right? And you can't get no rest, you have no peace, you have no joy. But I'm going to tell you this, the God of hope says, you know what I'm going to do? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I will erase every single bit of that. So now whenever you're going through, you can look back and see where you used to be. When I used to walk a certain way, when I thought I was cool, and I thought I was somebody, and dress a certain way, think and act a certain way certain way he erased every bit of that so now I can walk up right because I'm headed I'm headed over here to where the hope is I've got a confident expectation that God is that, that kept me over here the same God that's keeping me right here is going to take me over to there I have a hope I don't know what the future is I don't know when your pain is going to break I don't know when your breakthrough is coming I have absolutely no idea but I know if you're trusting the God of hope it's coming it's going to be there you gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. I can tell you, I sit in a room with people in my family that got more degrees than me, more money than me, more prestige than me. But when they need a lightning rod, when they need some hope, they say, Jim Jim, what do you think? I think Jesus can do it because I watched him do it. I know he did it in me. He can do it in you. All you gotta do is have hope. It's not a wish. It's not any anticipation. I know what he's going to do. So I'm confident and I expect the God who said that he would take care of me will take care of me. The reason why you're sad and mopey and walking around like, oh, Lord Jesus, is because you don't expect God to do anything. You expect him to come and pay your bill. How about if he just give you some joy in the dark because you didn't, pay, didn't have no money? You keep coming in and you expect God to go and bring you a man. How about, or excuse me, and a woman, how about if you just have some peace with the dog? Why do we always have to tell God what we want? Most of the time when we do that, we sell ourselves short. All I want to do is stop getting high. He said, get high on me. That's way better. All I wanted to do, Lord, can I pay my bills? Give me somebody to help me with these children. He gave me somebody that would die for me. You stop selling God short. Your confident expectation in the God of hope will take you further than you ever thought. Will give you more than you could ever ask. And the Bible says he will do exceedingly and abundantly above all 
that you ask or think. Stop making God a genie. He's God. Jim Jim is now the man of God. Nappy head, peeing in the bed till I was 12, cussing at nine years old because I thought it was fun. Now I tell you what, my bed is dry, but my face is wet because I love Jesus. <laughs> I don't understand how you can know him and stay in your seat, but I don't need you to get up. I ain't prompt enough. I don't need no cheerleader to tell me about the God that got me from there and he's going to get me to there. I expect the best because my God is the best. This is the God that rose the man from the dead. Surely he can resurrect you from a little trouble with some bills. Surely he can resurrect your finances because you messed up and bought a car because your neighbor bought one. He can resurrect a man. He can get you the bills paid. He can get you a man. I say that because women sometimes have more of a desire for a man than men have for a woman. I, except me, I had four children. <laughs> I needed some help in this thing. Amen? He sent me more than a woman. He sent me a godly woman. Exceedingly. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh, she's going to get in trouble today. I'm buying you a good dinner. Come here, baby. Come here. I love this girl. This is what, let me tell you what her new name is. Her name is Mrs. Exceedingly. Mrs. Abundantly, Mrs. Above, Mrs. All that you can ask or think, Lee. Ha <laughs> ha! Give God some praise, y'all. Y'all know about the God I serve. The God that I serve will give you more. He will blow your mind. I was a clown in school, y'all. I never did mind being up front, even if it meant me getting suspended. I'm, oh, I didn't. I'm going to get in trouble for that, too. I didn't help it down the steps. God will take who you are, where you are, all that he's given you, all your experiences, all of you. That's good and bad experiences. All of that he allows you to go through, that he brings you through, that he carries you over, that he pulls you through. He takes all that and makes you the person that he can use. Stop hiding who you are. This ain't your first boyfriend. Quit telling people that. This ain't your first girlfriend. Quit telling people that. No, this ain't your first drink. You was drunk yesterday. I know where I'm at. I bet you it's seven, eight, seven, eight weed smokers in this crowd right now. And I think I'm being conservative. God can take you from right there. You can get to heaven from here. Here, I got to heaven from here. You got to stop letting people tell you that God can't do it for you. You got to stop letting people say, you know, because he was out there, you didn't had four babies by five different men. I don't even know how that works. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to see if y'all listening. You got to stop that. You got to stop letting people tell you what you can't do and who God or what God can't do and who you are. Stop allowing fallible man to tell you that an infallible God can't take your fouled up life and make it straight. I'm a living witness, y'all. I'm a living witness. I didn't tell y'all half of the stuff I did because we don't have enough time. Y'all want to go home. God took a crooked man and put him on a straight path. He can do the same for you. Now, family, the, door, the, the, the old Baptist in me says the doors of the church are now open. There's somebody out here right now today that did not believe before this message that there was any hope. Someone who didn't believe that the child that they may be carrying has any hope because the daddy is gone or you may not even know who he is. You may not have a place for him or her to live. There's someone out here now that said, man, there's no way in the world I can ever stop smoking weed. When I was 19, I thought the same thing. Somebody in the audience right now that's going through some hell in their life and they believe that there's no way out. But I'm going to tell you, the God of hope will give you hope in the darkest of days. And at the end of the darkness, there's sunshine. Remember that life, when life gives you a valley, you know, in order to have a valley, you have to have mountaintops on both sides. Y'all missed it. That means that just because you're down here, no matter which way you go is up, you can get up from here. 
Don't allow anyone to tell you that you got to stay down. You don't have to. You just trust in the God of hope. Is there anybody in this room today that needs prayer because they're going through? Y'all, come on up. If you, you have a, a, a chance, come on, give her, give her, give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. See, and this is what I'm, I'm going to I'm do some back. Give him a hand. I'm going to scold my Baptist friends because, look, here's the deal. When someone gets up in the midst of all of us, we should get up with them because we are going to go through with our brothers and sisters. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If there's someone here today who does not know the God of hope as their Savior, they don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. If you don't know him, I'm going to tell you, it don't matter where you've been, he can save you from here. If you don't know him, come on, come on up if you don't know Jesus. Because the one thing we're offering today, I can't offer you hope, I'm going to offer you Jesus, and that's where your hope comes from. That's where mine comes from. If you don't know him, then come on up. If you're looking for a church home, anybody that's looking for a church home, Bethel's family, though it's a big church, it feels small because we have faith, we trust in God, and we give God all the praise and everything that we do, so we feel small, and that gives you hope. Anybody that's been here for a long time knows what we're talking about. If you need prayer, if you need Jesus, which means you need hope, because living in this world without Jesus is a, is a world in despair. You can't win without Jesus. I said you can get to heaven from here, but first you got to go through Christ. So if you don't know him, it's all right. Don't let church folk, don't let Satan, don't let your friend, don't let your conscience tell you tomorrow, because tomorrow's not promised. I did the funeral for Reverend Harold Allen on uh, Saturday, yesterday. He was at his friend's house having a good time. His chest started to hurt. He started to throw up. He went to go lay down and never got back up. Let me tell you something. Death is no respecter of persons. And death is undefeated. Death is undefeated. So if you don't know Jesus, don't die in your sin. Don't die in your sin. Today is being offered. Tomorrow isn't promised. The promise is that Jesus Christ has died for your sins. That you don't have to die the second death. Come on, sister. Give my sister a hand. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on.